Hello students, so here is a recap of the poem Your by Sylvia Plath and you can get ready to take notes and annotate uh, to supplement what you've already written when you heard the presentation in class. So the title Your is an abbreviation of you are of course. So um, this abbreviation, direct address, um, you know, it's, it's, it reminds us of um, in the bell jar, when uh, the the um, alter ego of um, Sylvia Plath goes out into the sea, and she's contemplating her life, and she says, "I took a deep breath and listened to the old brag of my heart. I am, I am, I am," and this rhythm is the rhythm of her heartbeat but it's also an assertion of her existence of her being so your you are is very similar when she addresses her child in this manner your clown like happiest on your hands feet to the stars and moon skulled gilled like a fish the common sense thumbs down on the dodo's mode so the first quatrain here introduces a happy note, and this is perhaps one of the happiest poems in the collection, Ariel. And she immediately uh, refers to her baby as clown-like, so something joyful. And the word happy is the, um, uh, the, uh, the superlative there, um, also enhancing that mood with the H sound, the alliteration in H. Uh, adding to that emphasis. And when she says feet to the stars, of course it's a description of the way the fetus lies in the womb with its feet upwards. But uh, this image of the feet to the stars is also a kind of uh, inversion of being grounded, if you like, the stars representing hope and destiny. Moon skull, so we have in the same line um, with the caesura there, pausing after stars uh, and drawing a connection to the moon skulled description of the shape of the fetus's head but stars and moon together in the same line creating this cosmic um, atmosphere um, relating the life of the individual fetus and baby to the universe and then gill like a fish of course, reminding us of the evolution of the human embryo and how, if you look at the picture in the, picture in the top left-hand corner of this slide, how the human embryo resembles that of a fish um, as it relates back to our uh, shared ancestor in the evolutionary time. And the caesura again in the middle of that line, a common sense thumbs down. So it's interesting that we have uh, common sense, which means sort of pragmatic. Um, and this thumbs down on the dodo's mode is a reference to the extinct bird, the dodo. And so the, the common sense thumbs down is a sort of pragmatic decision, if you like, or it's not a decision for a fetus to be born. It's not a decision for a fetus to choose life. But nonetheless, this life force is indeed a negation of extinction. So that's the, the way in which Plas is using colloquial language to affirm the life force that this baby in her womb is uh, communicating to her. Wrapped up in yourself like a spool, trawling your dark as owls do. Mute as a turnip from the 4th of July to all fool's day. Oh, high riser, my little loaf. So in the continuation here, we have, of course, not a quatrain, as I said in the previous slide. It's nine lines per stanza, and that's significant because of the nine months of pregnancy. Um, so this idea of the spool... A spool is something wound round and it reminds us of the spool of film that we could have, uh, which might denote the uh, film of a life unrolling, uh, revealing itself. Um, and at the moment, 
that fetus's life is still wrapped like a spool, and she speaks of her fetus trawling the your dark as owls do. Now, trawling is a sort of uh, nautical image again, as a trawler is a fishing boat. But uh, here she's conflating that idea of um, the fishing boat out at sea and the owl flying through the night. So both of those images are quite lonely and isolated. The owl, of course, also reminds us of Athena and of the goddess of wisdom, uh, perhaps female wisdom here. Um, Plath wrote this after the birth of Frida, so with retrospect she knew that her baby was a, a, a female. I don't know if that's significant, the owl, but the owl is also a bird of omen, so a bird that uh, predicts or, or suggests a future destiny um, and witchcraft. So again, a supernatural idea there. Mute is a turnip from the 4th of July to All Fool's Day. Well, the uh, designated time frame, again, is nine months. And All Fool's Day, the 1st of April, was Frida's birthday. So that's a reference to the gestation period of her pregnancy. But during this time, the fetus is described as mute, of course, unable to communicate with words. But turnip is a comic image, a very grounded, earthy vegetable rooted in the earth. Um, and then she speaks of, with a, yet another image, this accumulation of images to try to describe, almost as if she's trying to grasp this child through imagery. And here with the apostrophe, oh, high riser, my little loaf, she uh, uses colloquial language to um, refer to an expression, which is to have a bun in the oven, meaning to be pregnant. And here her baby is um, a loaf rising in the oven. So um, affectionate tone created there. Vague as fog and looked for like mail, farther off than Australia, bent back atlas, our travelled prawn, snug as a bud and at home like a sprat in a pickle jug. So here we have uh, lots of short consonant sounds um, that create again this rhythm which is quite light and fast moving and even though we have quite a few end stopped lines in this poem which make us pause um, that the rhythm is almost uh, like a completion a, a, a sort of finality which is ongoing um, and determined like the birth of a child um, vague as fog, well, this is the unknown face of the child in the womb. And looked for like mail, well, this mailbox representing expectation and hope. Farther off than Australia, well, of course, that's the distance that the mother feels from her child. And then she refers to the child as a bent-backed atlas. Atlas, the famous titan who holds the earth on its back. So it's at once the shape of the fetus in the womb and also this uh, metaphor for um, the burden of life that it's about to come into. Um, and at the same time, in the same line, that burdened image, which is almost tragic, is coupled with a rather comic image again of the baby as a prawn, um, snug as a bud and at home like a sprat in a pickled jug. Again, a, a strange comic image of a fish-like creature that the fetus resembles and the pickle jug, these sounds adding to the um, comic effect. Um, we'd expect snug as a bug, but here at the bud image, of course, uh, creating expectation and life to come. Um, but the pickle jug, mm, slightly disturbing still uh, as an image of a baby. A creel of eels, all ripples, Jumpy as a Mexican bean, right, like a well-done sum, a clean slate with your own face on. And notice the rhythm again, which is da-da-da-da-da. Uh, so it's, it's a very light tripping rhythm, and uh, this creates the overall joyful atmosphere here. The creel of eels, again a disturbing image with ripples, um, 
you know, it's slightly off-putting and disgusting. The um, jumpy is a Mexican bean. A Mexican bean is, in fact, an insect, and you can see the life cycle of the Mexican bean up at the top there. So again, slightly um, detached and disturbing animal image of the baby. Um, and then she refers to the baby uh, with a simile like a well-done sum at term, at the end of the pregnancy, and uh, its perfection being uh, uh, evoked through the mathematical metaphor. And the clean slate um, gives us a sense of uh, hope and optimism, a new chance at a life. And with your own face on, uh, really pointing to the individuality of Frida, who will be separated from her mother and become her own person. So there's a, a note of hope that she will not inherit the same suffering as her mother there. So there's a regularity to the form of the poem, with nine lines in each stanza representing the pregnancy perhaps, and mostly eight syllables per line, so a regular rhythm. And the voice is the parent speaking to her unborn child, a direct address creating this relationship there, which is nonetheless slightly distanced by the strange imagery of fish and uh, eels and uh, Mexican beans. So there's no sense of actual progression uh, through the pregnancy, time is standing still here. It's a, a moment of happiness. And uh, it, the momentariness of that is perhaps significant, that it can't last. And so the theme, of course, is that of motherhood. Um, there's a celebration of the foolish, perhaps foolish life wish. And the imagery of the fish, the owl, the turnip, the loaf, the pickle is all rather surreal. And it reflects the bemused and slightly detached observation of Sylvia Plath towards her own pregnancy. And this contrasts with the conventional idea of instinctive motherhood. Now, the tone is definitely unsentimental, humorous, distanced yet affectionate. We could link this poem to a morning song or in contrast to Medusa through the fishy watery creature imagery. Um, though it's less threatening in, in this poem. Um, the contrast with Medusa, of course, um, is the, the lack of affection between mother and daughter. Um, with Pinta, the idea of a clean slate, making a new start, being reborn, Stanley imagines that he could have this, but is it an impossible desire? Uh, with Wadwo, again, we have a water creature searching for itself born into an unfamiliar world. Uh, with Adrian Henry's uh, poem, Tonight at Noon, we have an upside down happiness in the first three lines. And you can add your own connections to the post-war synoptic period.